Today I'm going to answer the question, why do I need a second citizenship if I can get second residence? Isn't that enough? We got a question from Sergio. We've actually been asked this a number of times before who said, is there really any advantage of having a second citizenship over a second residence in terms of having a plan B and being able to escape your home country in times of crisis, i.e. is a second residence good enough or should we aim for citizenship? That's an interesting question. People often confuse residence, citizenship, passports, tax residence. People get those all confused. I'm going to tell you what I think you need to do. If it's your first time here, my name is Andrew Henderson. I'm the founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consultancy that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally reduce their taxes, get second residences and second passports. Just generally go where you are treated best. That's what we do for folks. I'm also the host of the biggest and best offshore conference called Nomad Capitalist Live, open to absolutely everyone. So the advice I'm going to give does not apply to folks who cannot get dual citizenship. What we've generally advised is if you are Dutch, for example, if you are Singaporean, um, if you are in a country where you're not allowed to have dual citizenship, number one, don't lose hope because we've seen Germany now saying they're going to open up uh, more flexible dual citizenship rules. We've seen Norway expand. Before that, we saw Georgia expand. Uh, you're seeing more countries open up. That's the trend. You don't really see a lot of countries going back and limiting it, right? The genie's out of the bottle. Um, but if you are just you know, one citizenship and you have to stay that way, get residence permits. Go out and get residence permits that you can season to where whether you have to live there or whether it's a paper residence, you can just kind of let, let the clock tick. Three years from now, five years from now, whatever number of years from now, you can go and collect that citizenship in the future. Maybe even later than, uh, than someone who can have dual citizenship would claim it. Maybe you could claim it in three, but you're going to claim it in five. But once you've passed that three years, you're going to be able to just to uh, say, hey, now I'm in and I can go apply anytime I want if my country opens up the law. So that's what we've generally advised. If you can't have dual citizenship for everybody else, here's my suggestion. And I'm reminded of a story when I was in a different business. I was living in the United States. I drove from where I lived to Los Angeles to pick up a client. I drove my own car and I'm picking up the airport and they're like, oh, this is not a bad uh, rental car. I said, actually, this is my car. And I had this, like what I call like the best Honda Accord. This is, this is young Andrew. I had the best Honda Accord. I had the sunroof. I had the. I thought this was like this was great because I was getting away with like a like a like murder, right? Because I didn't have to pay for the fancy car. I wasn't really not really a car guy, and I got to have like all the features, right? I had the heated and cooled seats, all that stuff. And I'm driving them around. They said, "Listen, either get the cheap pickup truck or get that car right there. Get the you know get the expensive Maserati." Don't be in the middle. Don't think you're getting away with something by being in the middle. If you're going to go out and plan for some kind of black swan event, for higher taxes, for geopolitical issues, for whatever, don't go into the mushy middle. Take it all the way. I think we've seen why that's important just in the last couple of years. We had a pandemic. Now, no doubt, being a citizen of a couple of countries wasn't any help. I'm looking at you, Australia. Uh, but there were some countries where it was easier for a citizen to get in than a resident. There were a handful of countries where certain residents couldn't get into the country. Um, more in Asia, uh, where it was like, hey, your country has too many COVID cases, even though that country is the United States and they're measuring the same scale that they would measure. You're from Trinidad and Tobago. Well, of course, the United States is going to have more COVID cases, but they made it onto some of the, uh, the naughty lists. So, um, citizenship was a higher standard. Now, certainly there are some countries where, hey, um, you know, the commonly discussed one is Iran. Uh, if you're an Iranian citizen and you try to leave, I mean, you're always an Iranian and they, you know, but you know, countries certainly can control you if you are a citizen living in the country, which is why I think plan A, actively going where you're treated best, finding a place where you want to live and then having the second passport on top of that is better. But certainly, you know, if you're in a country where you're a citizen, they do have some control over you. Um, but generally speaking, you know, as long as you can leave the country, which certainly for some people was kind of difficult, but as long as you can leave, you can put that second passport to use. You can come back. You can kind of move around. Residence permits aren't uh, as strong. Residence permit terms can also be changed. Now, a lot of times country will, uh, countries will grandfather people in, i.e. you get a residence permit on these terms. You can renew it every year or it's just good you know, for five years or in some rare cases, just good indefinitely. We've seen situations uh, like in Malaysia, for example, they said, hey, OK, uh, we'll let the current MM2H people renew. Um, but after a certain period of time, the numbers are going to go up. And if you're new, the numbers go up. And if for some reason, you know, you didn't meet the conditions to keep your residence permit, you have to come in and get a new one. So if you were a citizen of a country, 
uh, you know, barring the fact that you were to go and join ISIS or something, there are certainly, there's been a lot of stories in the news in recent years about, you know, dual citizen Australians or Canadians or Brits, like where they're trying to take away the citizenship because the guy went to the battlefield. I, I, don't, I hope there's nobody watching this. So as long as it's not you, I mean, there are more proposals to like take people's passports away, uh, but not their citizenship, there's a difference. So as long as that's not you, I mean, a citizenship is permanent. And so as long as you're not the Australian who's stuck outside of Australia or stuck in Australia, um, you know, at a time when they're not letting people in or out, then that citizenship is just always going to be a value to you. Um, certainly we've seen that there are a couple of citizenships like that one where they're not all they're cracked up to be. You paid them for years and then you go on a, on a vacation for a couple months and you come back and they're like, nope, not allowed in. So I really believe that um, having a backup plan that includes, yes, a residence, but also citizenships is important because there is a greater permanence. Let's take another example. Let's say your country wants to do something totally wild. It could be any kind of black swan event. It could be higher taxes. It could be a new one-time tax. It could be a retroactive tax. It could be a new wealth tax. They could just come in and say, by the way, countries have said this and they're continuing to, to propose this in various places. Hey, uh, you know what? Pay us 10% of everything you got. Just one time, <laughs> one time and uh, you know, we're good. You might say, you know what? I'm living in my residence country. I have a second citizenship. I don't wanna give them 10% of what I got. So you know what? I'm going to exit that country. I'm gonna say, here's your passport back. Well, you either can't do that or it'd generally be a pretty bad idea in my opinion to do that with no other citizenship and become stateless. There are some people who are stateless. It is probably not a kind of life that most of you would wanna live, I, I think. Uh, and so you never know when those black swan events are coming down. By the way, it could be geopolitical. You never know when your country is going to get in a fight with other countries. You never know when a war is going to break out. You never know when your passport bec could become much less respected. My advice, quite frankly, is I would like to have, if I'm from a country where I think there could be a respect issue, a perception issue, a tax issue, a lot of Western countries have that, um, a geopolitical issue, I want to have some kind of agnostic citizenship. So. Um, you know, if I'm in a country that's going out, uh, you know, starting wars with people, uh, you know, maybe I want to have some kind of Caribbean citizenship. Uh, maybe I want to, I want to have like the opposite so that I, what I also might want to have, by the way, is a country where they're actually going to respond and serve me. I've seen people who have multiple passports where one passport, they want to get a residence permit in a different country. It takes them six months to get the documents. Another one, it takes them one day to get the documents. And with residence procedures, you often only need one passport. They don't necessarily say, hey, which multiple passport? They're like, okay, which one are you using here? And so if you can save yourself six months and have a much easier bureaucratic procedure while at the same time protecting yourself against black swan events, that is uh, an advantage. Caribbean citizenships probably aren't going to be the place where you get things like police reports in one day. And if you're not living there, then it's not really what you want the police report. But this is all immaterial. The idea is having some kind of agnostic citizenship guards you against the potential of new tax stuff, black swan events, whatever could happen in the world. And there's been a lot of stuff happening in the world in the last number of years. Um, it was the pandemic, it was wars, uh, it was threats of wars, um, it was now runaway inflation, it's calls for higher taxes. You never know when your country is gonna start doing something wild that's going to affect you, where you don't wanna be associated with them. You don't wanna be one of them. And so even if you can get a citizenship somewhere by investment in six months, that may not be fast enough. So why not be prepared in advance? Now, again, theoretically, could you expatriate from your country if you held, let's say, permanent residence somewhere? Sure, now you're stuck in that country. And what happens if things change in that country? What if the taxes go up? What if it becomes, I mean, who does? So you want to have a second citizenship. If I can get one that's agnostic, I would especially like to do that. Agnostic being, they ain't bothering anyone. And I would stack a residence on top of that. So where the citizenship is from, by the way, doesn't have to be the best. We, I'll give you an example. Recently helped someone who was from Canada. They'd like to remain Canadian, but they're concerned about what's happening. They, they really are concerned the direction the country's going. But, you know, they're investing. They don't want to peel off a lot of money to go and make an investment in, let's say, a Caribbean country. I said, listen, one of you has Armenian ancestry. Let's go and get your Armenian citizenship by descent. It's not going to cost you really anything. And it's not the strongest passport. It's, it's, in fact, a far cry from a Canadian passport. But you know what? If something totally wild happened in Canada, at least you'd be a citizen of somewhere else. At least you could move from there. And then you could regroup as an Armenian and figure out, okay, what am I going to do now? 
you could take all the money you've been building up over, you know, in this time and say, you know what, now I'm gonna do the Caribbean citizenship as an Armenian. Now I'm gonna do Malta. Now I'm gonna go and move somewhere and get naturalized. Now, you know, you figure out where you're at then. So that person, it didn't make sense for them to go out and spend a whole bunch of money, but that was a passport they can claim, even though it was much worse, it was potentially, in many cases, agnostic. You know, certainly Armenia has some beef with a few people, but not in most parts of the world. They're, they're generally welcome. So I would get a citizenship, whether it's, you know, whatever it may be, if it's by descent, if it's by investment, um, get some kind of citizenship. And the faster you can, the better, I think, generally, especially if you're looking at higher taxes. Those are coming to the West. Black Swan events had a lot of those in the last couple of years. And then I would figure out if I wanted to live somewhere else, and that's where I wanted to come and go, I would stack a residence. Certainly, I think that residence permits in places like Dubai, Singapore, Cayman Islands, really most places in Asia, quite frankly, um, just got back from Bangkok, um, you know, you have a lot of expats there, and they're very much used to that with the Thai investor visa, the Thai elite visa, others, the retiree visa. There's numerous different ways you get into Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore. I mean, these are places that you're not going to get citizenship, but they're used to expats living there. Same, obviously, with Dubai. Decent amount of that in Panama, Cayman Islands, I mean, Bahamas, all, all those kinds of places. Difficult to become or impossible to become a citizen, but they're used to that. And so, they're going to be, generally speaking, more liberal of people coming and going versus, let's say, maybe in Australia, or I have folks who, hey, they, they wanted to bring their fiance to the United States, but she didn't meet the criteria for whatever the current U.S. criteria are right now. You know, they're probably going to be a bit more strict. So citizenship and residence, they, the two of them work together, but I wouldn't want to, unless I had a situation where I couldn't be a dual citizen, go and just cut the passport out of the equation. We've seen too many problems. We've seen too many issues. I believe that you're going to have a situation where a lot of the, the Western countries are going to try and lock you in, take more of your stuff, make your life more difficult. Probably a number of countries around the world are going to do that. I want to be prepared.